What's going on folks? Welcome to another episode of Ask RGT85 where I answer your questions. This week's question comes to us from Kinda Tenenron Stand Up? That, that, that's not a real name. I'm, I'm reporting you to Facebook. That's not your government name. I'm, I'm just kidding. Buying repro cards. Who gives a fuck, right? It's your money. And reproductions. Reproductions are an interesting thing to talk about because I kind of want to expand a little bit. Go into the whole world of reproductions. Not just carts, but everything. So in this video, we're going to talk about reproduction cards. Are they good for retro gaming or are they bad? Let's find out. If you're a younger viewer on this channel or someone just getting into retro gaming, you might not know what the world of reproduction is. So in this video, I'm going to kind of go over all the different facets of reproduction and whether I like them or whether I have a problem with them. And so getting into it, basically um, starting out, I think a good spot is a reproduction case. This is a copy of Enemy Zero on the Sega Saturn. I have long lost my case. Sega Saturn cases are hard to come by. So I decided to buy a reproduction case. Reproduction cases. Good things. I like these. Gives me a way to protect my physical media and it still looks good. It has the artwork on it. You know, pretty cool. I like these. Um, you, you can make them yourself if you want to, but I'm far too lazy and I do not own a printer. So reproduction cases. One facet of reproduction gaming, I guess. I guess that's a thing now. Reproduction gaming. We're going to make it a thing and a good faction of it. Next up, you have things like multi-carts. Now, this is a 150 and one multi-cart. I actually reviewed this on the channel and I like it. You know, I like things like this. Not everyone is getting into retro gaming to, you know, collect. Some people get into retro gaming just to play. And that's totally cool. If you have an old NES and you don't want to buy all the original NES games, you want something simple like this, this is perfect for you. It has all 100, it has 150 games on it. Most of them are pretty good. You can buy these from eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, and they're fun. You know, it's a simple thing to put in. I use this a lot, honestly, because I could pop in one cartridge and play a bunch of different games. I don't have to keep, you know, getting up. So these are cool. The best form of reproductions, in my opinion, is the following form. A lot of games don't see the light of day in North America, and you know, we never got to play them. So sometimes people make reproductions of games that only came out in Japan or only came out in Europe. And this is the case with this game, Sweet Home on the NES. So Sweet Home is like the precursor to Resident Evil by Capcom. It's sort of like a Final Fantasy meets uh, Resident Evil. A really awesome game and I had never played this before until I picked up a reproduction copy and I love it you know it's a great way to play a game that never released stateside on a cartridge on your original hardware or your clone system and it's great I have this I have um, Splatterhouse for the NES so I love these reproductions these are my favorite reproductions games that never came out or never released in this territory fully translated on a cartridge fantastic now the final episode or the final thing of reproduction gaming is of course, high dollar games being reproduced for pennies. And this is where a lot of people have probs. You know, there are people on YouTube, big YouTubers who are like, reproductions are Satan and the devil and you'll go to hell if you use them. And I'm just like, okay, okay let's calm down here. First and foremost, like the question said, it is your money. You can do whatever you want with your money. And that's something very important that people need to realize. It's your money. I don't care what you do with your money. You shouldn't care what I do with my money. It's none of your business. So basically these forms of reproductions are made, you know, in China and take a game like Earthbound, Little Samson, Mighty Final Fight, you know, high dollar games that are getting reproduced for cheap. And you can buy them for, you know, 30, 40 bucks on Amazon, eBay, um, AliExpress. AliExpress is probably even cheaper, but you gotta wait forever and there's a lot of people that have a problem with that sort of reproduction me personally i don't care under one condition well it's actually kind of two conditions first and foremost on these high-end reproduction games put that it's reproduction on the label somewhere just you know put it put it right here reproduction right right there or something you know what i'm saying like have a little class about it because there are people who want to buy the high-end one and to try and purposely trick people 
you know, into buying this at a cheaper price, you know, a lot of people aren't savvy like you and me. A lot of people won't think to, you know, check the creases on the case, to check the weight of the case, to check the board inside of it. People may just be impulsive. And, you know, that is, that does fall upon the person buying it, but that also falls upon the person selling it. You know, it's deceiving, it's deceitful. So I don't like that. I wish that more companies would, you know, put a reproduction somewhere on the label of the game. The bigger thing though is of course, which what I just alluded to are these people that are selling reproductions as actual games. And that's that I don't like at all. If you're trying to trick people, if you're buying a bunch of, you know, $25 earthbounds and selling them for $200, you're kind of a piece of shit. And the biggest, you know, perpetrator of this is actually GameStop because GameStop does not check any of the retro games that they get in. That's why Earthbound only trades in for $25. So, more than likely GameStop, if these people are giving you an Earthbound for $25 and then you turn around and sell it for market value, you're pretty much saying I'm taking in a fake game, I'm not going to take the time to check it, and I'm going to sell it. And if you're not happy, you can return it, or if you don't know any better, you'll just keep it and you'll have a reproduction game. And you know, some people might say, well, what's the big deal? You know, it still plays, it still looks the same, blah, blah, blah. It's more or less the principle, you know, if you go to New York City and you go to Chinatown, and you buy a pair of Jordans, and you know, you want to get authentic Jordans. Some people like to have authentic things. I would rather, I would much rather have no reproduction games and have all of the original games, but I also don't wanna pay that price. So I don't mind buying reproduction games, but the problem is people take it a step too far. People try to screw over other people. People try to, you know, you know, cheat, lie, cheat, and steal. Eddie Guerrero, you know, I poppy. Um, but that is a problem, and that's the one facet of reproductions I don't like. I love reproduction carts, cases, anything reproduction is great. Just don't try to trick people and don't be deceitful. Don't be a scumbag. It's, it's, it's simple. It's video games, baby. It's video games. So I hope that answered your question well enough. Um, like usual, if you would like to be a part of Ask RGT85, make sure you like the Facebook fan page. I do these once a week where you can ask a question and I'll pick one and answer it. I will catch you guys next time. Later. Take it